Well, thank you very much, Julian, um, and welcome this morning. Uh, great to see uh, all of the our new cohorts for this for this year. Uh, feel free to to turn on your video uh, if if it's something you're comfortable with. We'd love to get to see your face and connect with you uh, visually as well. Um, so again, as Julian mentioned. Uh, my name is Steven Ambuaje, and of course, on behalf of our entire team, uh, who you will meet shortly as well, um, it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to York University and to the Ready, Set, U program. Uh, the design of Ready, Set, U creates conditions for students to succeed, cultivate learning, create a sense of community, expand knowledge and skills, and develop self-agency. Uh, without doubt, the past year was filled with numerous challenges and also opportunities. Uh, many students showcased grit, resilience, and a desire to succeed. And that desire to succeed continues to inspire all of us today. For me, I hope you will discover over the next three uh, pre-orientation sessions we have in store for you, uh, what I've discovered in my many years at York, and that is you have entered a lively, challenging, diverse, and warm community. And at the center of your York University center, uh, experience is the Ready, Set, You program. So as you set out on this incredible journey, I want you to know that the entire university is here to support, sustain, and encourage you as you commit to study at York. Uh, we could not be more privileged to welcome you into this year's program. And I encourage you to take advantage of the opportunities uh, and the very uh, specialized resources available to help you on this journey and to ensure your success. So I speak for the entire faculty, staff, and student community here at York and saying we're so happy uh, you made that decision to join us uh, this year. So welcome, uh, and we look forward to you know, encouraging it and seeing you uh, participate throughout this session uh, this morning. Next slide. And so, you know, at York here, uh, before we begin events, uh, we recite the university's land acknowledgement. Uh, it's important for us to take that time during the land acknowledgement to pause and just reflect on what it means and how it applies to the university and beyond. And so this morning, I'm just going to, uh, you know, acknowledge the, the land acknowledgement. At this meeting, as this, as this meeting is virtual and we're not all gathered in the same space, I recognize that this land acknowledgement might not be for the territory that you are currently on. We ask that if this is the case, you take the responsibility to acknowledge the traditional territory you're on and the current treaty holders. As a member of the York University community, I recognize that many indigenous nations have long-standing relationships with the territories upon which York University campuses are located that precede the establishment of the York University. York University acknowledges its presence on the traditional territory of many indigenous nations. The area known as Takaronto has been caretaken by the Anishinaabeg Nation and the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Huron Wendat. It is now home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis communities. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. This territory is subject to the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement to peacefully share and care for the Great Lake regions. Excellent. And now it's my privilege, uh, as you can see some wonderful faces here, uh, to introduce um, some of the, uh, our, 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 our team as well, uh, our mentors will follow, but I want to have the privilege to introduce uh, our colleague, Navini Asmoradora, uh, who is not here today, but you will meet uh, along the way. Uh, and of course, our director, Brian Poser, who I'll pass on just to uh, provide some few remarks as well and to introduce himself. And Brian, over to you. Good morning and thank you, Stephen. Welcome everyone. I have a few uh, welcoming remarks for you. Um, as Stephen has said, my name is Brian Poser and I'm the Director of Academic Success and Transition Programming in the Division of Students at York University. I'm delighted to welcome you to York as a uh, whole team is as well and to the Ready, Set, You program. And in a few minutes time, my team members will be orienting you to the details of the program, which has been designed specifically to support new students like you in your transition to York and to ensure you thrive in the university environment. I want to start out by saying that you made an excellent choice by opting in to Ready, Set, You. Through this program, you'll have a wealth of resources and supports at your fingertips, along with dedicated peer mentors and access to advising, student success workshops, and social events to support your sense of capability and belonging at York. Participating in Ready, Set, You is a condition of your acceptance to York 
but it was never conceived of as a penalty or as a list of things you must blindly satisfy to avoid losing your basis of admission. Rather, Ready, Set, You was designed and is offered expressly to simplify your access to specialized resources that all have your success, both academic and personal, as their top goal. In short, we succeed when you succeed, and we're here for you throughout the journey at York University. That journey is a learning journey, and I encourage you to approach it with the mindset that not only did you come with many valuable skills for school, but that you can learn what you need to know to succeed at university along the way. I'm going to keep my remarks brief um, so that you and the Ready, Set, You team can maximize your focus on the details of all of the excellent elements that await you in the program. A uh, word of uh, guidance here, a lot of information is about to come your way, and we know that can feel overwhelming. So a recording of today's presentation will be available to you to refer back to after the session. There's no need to try to write down everything our speakers present today. Just sit back, listen actively, and get ready to learn all about the amazing things that Ready, Set, You has to offer. Stephen, back to you. Thank you so much, Brian, for those kind words. Uh, we can move on to the next slide, and uh, we can introduce the rest of the next. So I'll pass it on to uh, Shane uh, and Aisha to introduce themselves as well. All right. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Aisha Hashmi. I'm a student success mentor lead at Ready, Set, U. Um, just a little bit about myself. I'm a third year honors a BHS student, and um, just a tip, I was a mentee, just like all of you present here, and um, now I'm a mentor, and I will touch base on that a little bit later, but it's really nice to meet you all, and I hope to work with some of you in the future. Welcome. Shanae, can I see you? Hi, everyone. My name is Shanae, and I'm entering my final year of a Bachelor of Science in Global Health, and this is my second year being a Ready, Set, You peer mentor, and I'm excited to meet you all and to help you through your first year. Hi everyone. Um, next up, I guess it's me. I'm Casey Oren. I'm also one of the student success mentor lead at Ready, Set, You. Um, I've been with Ready, Set, You. This would be my second year. Um, and just like Aisha, I was also a mentee um, in my previous years uh, going to York and here I am now. Um, and I am in my third year uh, specialized honors in psychology. So if you have psychology questions, uh, feel free to ask me. Over to you, Julian. Thanks, folks. What's up, everyone? Um, good morning. Um, so my name is Julian. Um, I, like my colleagues, I'm also a student success mentor lead for Ready, Set, You. Um, so I think this is my, come fall, this is my fourth year with the program. So I hope to use all those experiences from previous years to help you out. Um, for my program of study, so I actually started with uh, math for education, so didn't work out for me as much. Um, so I switched to honors BA and maj majoring in sociology, minoring in psychology. However, it's important to note that I do plan on going back to math later on in my life because uh, that's, a, that's a challenge I want to take later on. Okay, so thanks for introducing everyone. Um, Stephen and my fellow colleagues, thanks for introducing yourselves. Um, let's start with some housekeeping. So this is a safe and respectful, respectful space for dialogue and learning. So we are attentive to security best practices while using Zoom. Um, if the presenters, if we encounter some significant disruptions and or any safety violations, we will ask guests to log off. So the chat and Q&A function will be open and available to you throughout the event. So um, we urge you to um, keep these questions at the end when you can, um, because there is a dedicated question and answer portion to the event. But if you do have some urgent questions that you want to ask, um, the chat function is open and you know my colleagues and I will be monitoring that for any answers that we can give you. So we do welcome your thoughtful questions and input. Again, inappropriate comments that are out of scope or context or that do not align with our community standards may result in a participant's removal from the event. So keep it civil, everyone. <laughs> and of course, we, um, you, we may enable, you, may, you may enable live transcriptions via the Zoom interface at the bottom of your computer screens if it isn't enabled yet. 
So basically, that's just uh, subtitles. OK, um, so here are some of the learning outcomes. As a result of participating live in this uh, pre-orientation session, uh, you will learn about you start components. So many of you might have questions about that. Um, also, you will learn about the key components of Ready, Set, You, and you will come to value the learning skills and student services that York University offers. And of course, learn how to apply Ready, Set, You elements to your academic success. And the way we're going to go about it is, of course, first, we will uh, clarify what you start is with the help of a uh, pres mini presentation within this presentation that our partners in you start made for us. Um, and then we'll go into what Ready, Set, You is. And from Ready, Set, You, um, we'll introduce our colleague Veronica from Learning Skills Services to introduce what learning skills has to offer. And our friends Tammy and Brandon for advising will follow suit. Um, talking about academic advising. So without further ado, uh, we'll start with you start, uh, no pun intended, uh, and then I will share my screen. Um, it's a mini video that we'll have you guys watch. Um, if there's any problem with audio, just please message in the chat and we'll try to do what we can to resolve it. Okay, give me a second. So. Okay. Everyone can see the screen, the video screen? Yeah? Okay. Hi everyone, and welcome to York. My name is Madison, and I'm one of your USTAR coordinators for the summer. This brief video is to introduce you to USTAR for the 2021 to 2022 year. In this presentation, we will be focusing on four main topics. First, what is USTART? Second, what is USTART used for? Third, how do we use USTART and what is on the platform? And lastly, we will talk a bit about York Orientation Day. So, what is USTART? Put quite simply, USTART is an online platform for incoming students to help guide them through the process of transitioning to university. What is USTART for and what is on USTART? USTART offers quite a few different features and has multiple purposes. One section of USTART is called the Online Enrollment Tutorial. This section includes modules designed to walk you through the enrollment process to prepare you to enroll in your courses. The second main section of USTART is an online orientation and is known as University 101. University 101 is designed to help you get acquainted with York, York's resources and services, and other important student information, including finances, getting involved, academics, and more. USTART also links you to York's official online communities, including official Facebook groups for this year's incoming students. In these groups, you can ask questions and meet with other students starting in the fall. Lastly, USTART is where you can register and sign up for different orientation events. You can register for York Orientation Day, also known as YOD, which we'll talk about some more a bit later on. You can also register for York 101 and RSVP to Frosh Week, which is also known as social orientation. Now that we've discussed USTART's purpose, let's look at how to navigate the platform. Here on the screen is the online enrollment tutorial. As you can see, there are four modules to complete, each with a different role in preparing you for course enrollment. The online enrollment tutorial teaches students how to navigate USTART, which courses they need to take specific to their degree, how to build their timetable, and lastly, how to enroll in your courses. This is what University 101 looks like. It helps students integrate into student life, and it's a great place for students to access resources that are important for their time at York. In the image, you can see that there are several modules in University 101, each focused on a different topic, including transportation, wellness, academic success, and more. 
Each of these modules provides information and resources to help students as they start their first year. But the information in these modules are helpful for all your years at university. The University 101 modules are self-paced and can be completed anytime in your first year. But it is strongly encouraged that you do finish these modules over the summer as there's lots of important information for you. As you can see in the bottom corner, there is a module titled orientation. This is where you go to register for York Orientation Day and learn more about other orientation events, including FROSH. On the right hand side of you start, there's a support bar with different options. The first button labeled learn to enroll takes students to the online enrollment tutorial. The button labeled University 101 takes students to the University 101 modules that we just looked at. If you have questions about course enrollment, you can ask a question to an academic advisor directly by clicking the Ask Your Advisor button. If you're experiencing a technical issue with USTART, you can click the technical support button. If you have questions about USTART, you can ask them on the USTART's discussion board. And then lastly, you can click the Stay Connected button to join York's official online student communities and Facebook groups. Here on the screen, this is the pre-arrival checklist, which can also be found on USTART. The pre-arrival checklist includes different tasks students should complete before starting their classes. If you're ever unsure of what you need to get done, you can return to the pre-arrival checklist to see if there's anything left to complete. Please be aware that it can take a few days for the list to update and for the task to get checked off the list. We'll now briefly go over how to log into USTART if you have not done so already. So on the screen, this is the USTART landing page. To log in, select the new student login button. This button will take you to the Passport York login screen. To log into USTART, you will use your Passport York account and information. You will use your Passport York account to access numerous other York websites and student services. If you haven't already, you can create a Passport York account by clicking the Create Passport York Account button on the USTART landing page. From there, you can follow the steps to set up your account. Over the years, USTART has had many changes to improve its benefits for students. Recently, all students have been given access to University 101 and the overall user experience has been updated. Now we'll talk a bit about York Orientation Day. You can start by marking your calendars. York's Orientation Day takes place on September 3rd this year. York Orientation Day this year will also be taking place virtually. Orientation Day gives you the opportunity to meet lots of people, including professors, other first year students, and then also upper year students in your program. York Orientation Day is an academic orientation where you can learn more about your classes and programs. And a large part of York's Orientation Day is its welcome ceremony to welcome the entire incoming class to York, including yourself. Lastly, don't forget to join the official Facebook groups to stay connected. There's a main group for all students and faculty specific groups to meet students in your specific faculty. You can access the link on USTART or in the helpful links documents that will be attached to eClass. Additionally, be sure to follow Student Life YU on social media for important student life information. Their handle is Student Life YU across the main social media channels and shown on the screen, including Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. Thank you for listening to this presentation and good luck at your clients. I was mute, sorry. Um, okay, so um, I'm gonna go back to the slide now. 
Uh, you can see the slides now, yes? Okay, perfect. So um, in terms of just to enumerate some key takeaways from that video, um, basically you start uh, helps new students transition through step-by-step uh, -step modules that you just saw through that video. Um, and basically, it's highly recommended for students to sign up for USTART. It's highly, highly recommended because as you saw, um, that's also where you can access the uh, York Orientation uh, Day registration. So um, if you're ever trying to figure out where can I find um, uh, how can I register for YOD? Uh, you can do that through USTART. However, it's important to remember, and that's why there's an asterisk there. So remember that USTART is distinct from Ready, Set, U. So you, you folks are being admitted uh, via the Ready, Set, U program, which means that as an admitted student through the Ready, Set, U program, there are also uh, our own set of components that you are expected to fulfill as part of your admission. So in terms of what those are, that's where we're gonna be going to elaborate for you now. So the next section is Ready, Set, You. So what is Ready, Set, You? So Ready, Set, You is a project funded under the Ontario Post-Secondary Access and Inclusion Program. That's in, in short, it's basically a government-funded a government -funded program. And we're funded to support newly ad admitted high school students, you, and your successful transition into post-secondary study. Okay, so the way we do that is by providing you uh, customized supports to enhance student success, retention, and of course, uh, support your eventual graduation by connecting you to, the, to diverse uh, resources and initiatives in York University. And if we ever come across anything outside of York University, We'll also share that with you. So a good analogy here is that, you know, Ready, Set, You is your personal coach for your university experience. The idea being that just as how, you know, you may be going to the gym and you see some folks training by themselves and then you see some other folks training with actual trainers, you know, if you're going about it by yourself, you may be accomplished, you may be able to accomplish a lot, but with a trainer, basically, we're just amplifying what you can achieve on your own. So likewise, that's what Ready, Set, You is here to do. Now, how do we deliver these customized supports? So Ready, Set, You has three main components, each of which we will deliver and elaborate in this presentation a little bit later. The first is peer mentoring. Second is uh, leadership and community. And third, which uh, Tammy and Brandon will be going over for us later, will be uh, is academic advising. Okay. So peer mentoring. Uh, I should say first that peer mentoring is delivered by our mentor team. Uh, the mentor team in turn consists of fellow upper year students. So these are students with a firm understanding of the university culture. So in other words, the ins and outs of York University. And with that, of course, the upper year students will also have a firm understanding of the realities of student life. So just a note, you know, there's four mentor leads right now, but later in the year, you will get to meet more mentors as you go through your journey in your first year. Um, and when I say realities of student life, in this slide, um, it's not meant to scare you. It's just meant to explain and highlight the fact that, you know, the realities of student life isn't just all ups or all downs or any of those stereotypical uh, perceptions that you may have going into your first year, you know, from social media, from your friends, from movies. No, it's much more complex than that. And as you talk to your mentors, um, you will gain insight into the extensive experiences that come with it. So, for example, highlights and, of course, challenges and really just opportunities for growth. So now the, uh, the mentor team helps you out through these things. So including but not limited to these things. So goal setting, tracking, and evaluation. So we believe that students um, need to determine for themselves what they want to accomplish 
and we are here to help you stay accountable, all right? And then we also offer a needs assessment, which informs our referral to resources. So, you know, when we assess whatever you may need, the resources that come with that, that's how, you know, we know what exactly it is that, uh, again, you need. Um, next is, oh, this is a big one. So uh, from previous years, something that my team and I have noticed is students tend to come in saying, oh, I'm not good at anything. I don't know what I'm good at. But that's often a real mis misconception about themselves. You are good at something. It's often just a matter of identifying what it is you're good at. So we help you by sitting down with you and figuring out what, do you, what you have to bring to the table and to your university career. And in areas where there needs to be a little bit more improvement, we also help you identify those areas so you can begin working on them. And of course, through these peer mentoring sessions, you're also staying up to date with university affairs and we help you settle in your newfound roles as York University students. And this one is something that I like to do is, you know, debunk some post-secondary myths that, again, you might be coming in from high school teachers, from high school classmates, and so on. So some of these myths include the first one, which is I heard from, you know, plenty of high school teachers, you're just a number, which really isn't necessarily true. And frankly, it's something bad to say to students that are coming into university, because you're not just a number. Um, the way your professors and fellow university classmates will see you or treat you depends largely on how you approach them as well. Um, it's like, you know, making friends. It's not a one-way process, right? So, you know, to get acquainted and to get familiar with other people, you need to put yourself out there. Um, getting involved is one of many ways to find out where you belong. And it's important to note that it's not just about finding where you belong or finding yourself. It's also largely about building yourself, right? So building who you are, building your skills and working on yourself. So the next thing, again, going back to that idea, oh, I'm just not good at or something that I personally struggled with in my, in my first few years at, at university is the idea that bad marks equals failure or your failure or your incompetent, which again, it's not true. Um, competence takes time, energy, and effort as our peers at Learning Skills Services will let you know when you take their workshops. Um, and so really, if you're not as good as in, in math as you are in music, then it just takes more time and effort and energy for you to invest in math uh, compared to what you do in music. So it's not as absolute as you're not good at A, B, C, D. It's that you need to invest more time and energy, perhaps, to, for one thing over another. And that, of course, ties in with fact 2B, which is bad marks are not the end of the world. Um, as you will learn through academic advising and through us as well, there are steps that you can take to turn that around. So, you know, all this to say that bad marks do not equal incompetence, okay? And the third myth, which I... I personally, I, I don't get it, is, you know, when people say post-secondary is obsolete, like it's useless or something like that, which doesn't make any sense. And oftentimes this is go go going around in social media, Instagram, you know, how you have these entrepreneurs saying post-secondary is obsolete, when in reality, many jobs are, you know, like supplied by university graduates. Without universities, doctors, researchers, program officers, accountants, professors, teachers won't be here. And we all rely on them. So, you know, big companies themselves who are big on saying that, you know, degrees don't matter, it's just a piece of paper. They themselves rely on university graduates to, you know, for qualifications and, you know, to work with the company. So when people say post-secondary is obsolete, it's like, that doesn't make any sense to me. And most importantly, really, if you're not gonna take anything away from university, it's the critical thinking that's really important. So by going into university, you understand how to think. You, you get to learn how to think. So um, anyways, those are just some myths. But going back to the program, for the fall of 2021, the mentoring sessions will be primarily delivered through eClass and Zoom. eClass is the main repository for all RSY-relevant content from 
presentation slides like this one to recordings, resources, links, and mentoring activities, and more. And Zoom is, will be the default and primary delivery platform for mentoring sessions. So on a weekly basis, you are expected as part of your admission through Ready, Set, You to meet with your designated mentor um, and sit down in a video call. Um, and whenever these platforms don't, aren't, you know, whenever Zoom doesn't work out for a given day, then you're also responsible for letting your mentor know, hey, can we meet via phone call or email or e-class chats and forums instead? Um, I can't make it because A, B, C, D, right? So you have the responsibility to let us know when something isn't working out, right? And of course, you are responsible for letting us know ahead of time when you expect to miss a mentoring session completely, okay? So you're also expected to inform your mentors how you wish to make up for that missed session. So uh, for this slide, this is just letting you know the different secondary delivery platforms. So again, phone calls, emails, and you know, e-class discussion forums. But the main mentoring session platform is Zoom video calls. Now, we also recognize that we've had a rough year so far, probably especially true for uh, high school students um, who've been stuck for um, ages through just online learning. So there's a hunger for in-person components. And at Ready, Set, You, we do still offer in-person um, uh, mentoring sessions. However, it will be by appointment only for fall 2021. So just let us know if you wanna meet in person, and we'll see what we can do, we'll schedule you. Um, and speaking of uh, all these in-person components and all the COVID-19 related stuff, if you wanna learn more about them, hop into Better Together Your Q. So that's the main website where you can find out all university updates regarding um, the return to campus and the like. So right now, I'd like to pass it on to Brian to briefly go about those stuff, the directives and the like. So Brian? Julian, thanks so much. Um, so folks, we just wanna touch briefly on um, the YU uh, Better Together website. And um, you may have been hearing in the news that various universities are, are putting forward strategies and approaches to help ensure students, staff, and faculty safety on campus. And so um, I'm going to, I'm not sure if my uh, screen is shareable, um, Julian, uh, I'm gonna give that a whirl. Um, if it's shareable, I'd like to share with you, um, yes, it is, thank you. I'd like to share with you a piece of the Better Together website. And I encourage you to take some time just to browse through this website. Um, what we have up on my screen, I hope everyone can see it. Julian, is it visible for you? Very well. Um, this is the top 12 ways York is welcoming you back. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here, but I just wanna give you the overview of kind of the contents of the Better Together website. So you have a view of the various kinds of things that York is doing to ensure you're uh, coming back to campus safely or coming to campus for the first time safely. And uh, if you have you know, um, time and interest, you can pursue learning more about each of these things. Um, but here are some of the things we've been all learning about along the way. Enhanced ventilation and air filtration, vaccinations. Uh, York has just recently announced that it's gonna require vaccinations for students, staff, and faculty who are coming onto campus. York had prior uh, to today already announced that uh, students and residents would require vaccination. And so this is a nice step forward. Um, there's work being done on rapid screening and testing on campus. Automated screening and case management systems have been uh, designed and implemented. We're so far continuing with physical distancing and with the installation of plexiglass barriers where you'll be meeting face-to-face -face with people on campus. We're looking at uh, building capacity limits and monitoring campus density to make sure that there's a free flow of people that we're not creating conditions in which people can't successfully physically distance. There'll be a variety of hand sanitization and touchless entrances available to you. Um, indoors, we're gonna require masks or face coverings uh, unless there are medical exemptions in play. And uh, finally, a few lessons here, clear signage about the, the various directions you might want to take to kind of coordinate people's movement through physical space indoors, safe gathering areas, um, and the work that is going on now, a lot of what we're doing behind the scenes 
is our health and safety planning. We're all working very hard to ensure that there's uh, plans in place to make sure that when you are meeting with uh, our mentor team, most of that's gonna be virtual, uh, but as we migrate toward a face-to-face -to -face environment, that we have the, the procedures in place to make sure everyone is comfortable and everyone is safe. And finally, communication. Um, this, this website, Better Together, has been built to ensure that uh, the university has a means to put information forward that everybody can go to and get clarity on what the university is and is not doing. And so there are regular community updates and this site uh, the York U Better Together website uh, is probably your best and only needed stop uh, to gather this information. All right, I'm going to stop sharing, uh, Julian, and back over to you. Uh, I hope that gives you a little bit of a, a sense of the, the 12 things that uh, York is doing to welcome you back. Thanks, Brian. That was really helpful. Um, so yeah, um, if for more details, just please visit that website, Better Together York U, um, for COVID-19 and return to campus information. Okay, so um, this is now, this slide is the framework with which we approach peer mentoring. So we always begin by planning. So we plan with you um, to identify and outline your goals as well as set a plan in motion. So again, at Ready, Set, You, we really believe in self-determination. So your goal is yours, and we're here to support you along that way. Okay, so we do that by going into the next phase, which is uh, next stage, which is connecting. So we focus on relationship building. So we, we try to understand you, and re we review the goals with you and share your own strategies as well as ours. So there might be some overlaps with our experiences with you. So, you know, wherever we can, we share um, our personal ways through with which we navigated our university experience so far. And then once you're more settled in the planning and connecting stage, we now go to the advanced advancing stage, which is, you know, we ask you deeper questions for more understanding and we just keep the ongoing um, a conversation and help you keep on track with um, whatever you have in mind for your goals and your strategies. And we do this also by providing you with constructive feedback. Hey, you said that you will do this. Have you done them? Oh, maybe you should try this out. There are some resources. Maybe you should, you should attend some workshops, uh, workshops rather, um, that sort of stuff. And then Finally, transitioning. And this, when I say finally, keep in mind that this is a cycle. So for one phase, you're doing the support framework. And then once you've done that phase, we apply that framework for another direction. So when you transition, you're reflecting in your growth and your goals. What have you accomplished? What, is this, what are the successes? What are some remaining areas that you'd like to improve on? And of course, um, we, we always encourage you to lead the process. And by leading the process, that comes with identifying what your next set of goals are, what your vision had, what you have in mind next. So that's where the cycle sort of goes on. Speaking of the different phases and the cycle, um, Ready, Set, You has different phases. So the phase one and phase two are for your first year. And then that should shift together with uh, when in Ready, Set, Two for your second year and beyond. So phase one for you folks um, will begin for fall term 2021. And as I mentioned, we will, we will use the support framework. For what? For phase one, our focus is to help you feel comfortable and also get you a, a firm grasp of the university dynamics. And of course, help you develop a vision to work toward. Once you've figured out phase one, we've done phase one, we are gonna shift gears a little bit to phase two, which is gonna start from winter term, 2022. Um, and here, again, we're gonna be using the support framework, but this time it will focus on upper year concerns and affairs. So for example, program change and or evaluation. Are you gonna stay in your program? Do you like your program type of thing? And then also professional and um, leadership development. And then from second year and beyond, the idea here is that by Ready, Set, Two, 
you should be in a better position. You are now committed to the program and to your own goals that you have self-determined for yourself. And you're ready to give back to the York University community, meaning share your experiences with future students and perhaps, perhaps become a mentor to someone else in need as well. Okay, so you see you are here right now, so phase one, but uh, moving forward, I'm gonna pass it on to my colleague, Aisha, to speak more about um, leadership and community. All right, so as stated, uh, thank you, Julian, that Ready, Set, U is divided into two phases, right? Phase one, where students get to develop their um, academic and leadership skills, and then phase two, where you get to kind of focus on applying those transferable skills, right, through different leadership opportunities. So just like all of you in this orientation, I also started Ready, Set, U at phase one, right? And over time, as I continue to develop my skills, the team at Ready, Set, U encouraged me to pursue many different collaborative opportunities, eventually offering me a work study position as a mentor. So when I say I can understand what you guys must feel in terms of your anxiety and stress and fear, believe me, I, I know what that also feels like. As a student who has completed her two phases, right? Phase one and phase two, I am now part of Ready, Set, Two. And I can guarantee you that the continued support that is offered to grow as leaders and as academics, it helps you just like it helped me become an integral member of your student leader community. And every single student here in this orientation has the potential to become student leaders. It's just like Julian said, right? It's a matter of honing in on those skills and developing them and working on them, identifying those skills. And that is what the team at Ready, Set, You will help you guys do. Um, in the hopes that one day, or maybe next year, you never know, you might become a mentor and then you know, mentor first year students, incoming first year students. I'm going to pass it on to Shanae, I believe. Um, okay, so to be mindful for time right now, I'm going to pass it on actually to our peer, Veronica, to speak more on about learning skills services. Okay, awesome. Would I be able to just share my screen? Okay, let me just do that. Okay, let me just, sorry, get everything set up. Can everybody see my screen properly? Yep, okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna do a brief overview of what Learning Skills Services is, our goals, and the services that we offer to all of you. Um, before I get started, of course, introduce myself. So my name is Veronica, I'm a Learning Skills peer. I've been with Learning Skills for a few years now. Uh, and I'm also, of course, a student at York. So I'm just like you, <laughs> obviously. So let me get started to the next slide here. So at Learning Skills Services, we do provide tips and tricks for skills that nobody ever really teaches you before university, but skills that are absolutely essential nonetheless. Um, so some of the topics that we cover, which I will go over in a couple slides, are uh, topics like time management, reading and note-taking in university, exam prep, and much, much more. And we basically understand that everybody learns differently. And if you want some tools for different aspects of learning and studying, just try out some of our services and you can find out how you learn best. So I would say that our overall goal uh, at Learning Skills Services is to just essentially help students achieve their own academic goals through sort of just guiding you all on the right track. Okay. Um, and some of the different ways that we do this are listed here underneath uh, the services that we actually offer. And normally these are all in person, but you know because of the pandemic, we were able to transition everything to a fully remote format. Um, as for the fall, things should slowly transition back to normal. Um, but regardless, we do offer plenty of workshops, again, both online or in person, uh, covering a range of topics. So I'll just go to the workshop slide here. So again, we cover many different workshop topics. I'm not gonna read them all because we do have a few, um, but just you know, memory strategies, again, reading and note-taking, secrets of academic success, and many more, as you can see. So along with our workshops, we also offer something called peer academic coaching. So this is a one-on-one -on -one appointment that you would book in advance with a learning skills peer such as myself. And the appointments run for 30 minutes long. And we basically just discuss 
uh, any sort of learning skills related strategies to help support your own academic success. And one of the ways that I kind of like to describe peer academic coaching is it's almost like one of our personalized workshops specifically for you. So with all of the strategies and tips and tools that we can offer, uh, we bring that to you in the appointment but to your own personalized situation and questions, of course. So it is a really useful tool and I would definitely you know, make use of it uh, come fall time. So other than that, we also offer plenty of online resources, tips and many other strategies on our website. And I will take a minute after this to just give you a quick guide on our website and you know, where to find all this stuff that I'm talking about. But, um, and this is the last thing I'm gonna discuss before I do that. Um, but basically, we also have a Passport to Success certificate that we can offer you. So as you can see on the slide here, there's a little passport pamphlet sort of situation going on with all of our workshops listed inside. And basically, if you attend eight learning skills workshops, and this is throughout your entire time here at York, just eight, you'll receive a Passport to Success certificate, which is a really awesome addition to any sort of academic portfolio, as well as your co-curricular record here at York. Um, so, you know, we want you to attend the workshops for your own academic gain and knowledge, but this is also a really fun bonus on top of that. Okay, so now I'm going to stop my share here and share my um, screen for our website. So I also send the link in the chat in case you want to like follow along with me or, uh, you know, whatnot. So let me just put it in the chat. There we go. Okay. So I hope everybody can see the site now. Everything's good? Okay, perfect. So um, when you click that link that I just sent in the chat, or you can honestly just Google York University Learning Skills Services, uh, you'll be taken to this homepage here. And so if you just scroll down a little bit, you'll get you know a little welcome, some quick links, all that fun stuff. Scroll down a little bit more, we have our calendar for all of our workshops and events. Um, so here's just a quick example of like how the PDF version looks for it. Obviously, this is the July, August one right now, currently, but, you know, it'll be updated monthly uh, for the workshops that are up and coming and the times and the dates and where they're located and all that. Um, but our website is pretty much divided into four different sections. So first is our newest resource, as we can see here. So our newest resource is the Student Guide to Remote Learning. Uh, we know, obviously, for a lot of us, remote learning has been a really hectic situation. It can be uh, you know, difficult to handle. Even now, after doing it for a year, I find myself still confused about a lot of different things. Um, so we have a lot of cool events and just aspects of, um, you know, tips and things like that, that you can just sort of explore on your own time. I would highly encourage that. So along with that, we also have a little section titled, How Can We Help? So this will just take you to a bunch of the different topics that we cover that I've discussed. So uh, one of them that I talked about is time management, which is a huge topic in university. And it's something that a lot of students struggle with, especially in their first year. And so if I just click on this, for example, you know, manage your time, it'll take you to a bunch of different sections where you can learn more about, you know, specific ways to manage your time in university. You know, it'll take you to a bunch of blank schedules, documents and PDFs that you can just easily download to help you out a bit. So that's just an example of all the resources that we have for that. We also have our services pathway on our website, which is just a section for all of the services that I discussed. So our workshops, those one-on-one -on -one appointments, and it'll just show you how to register for a workshop, book an appointment, et cetera. And then lastly, once again, our calendar, which I mentioned before, which shows all of our up and coming events, which I would definitely uh, keep an eye out for because I'd love to see some familiar names in the future in uh, future events. But yeah, other than that, that is all I have for learning skills services. Again, I hope to see you in some of our services and workshops that um, I'll be involved with in the future. And yeah, thank you. Thank you for letting me present today. Thanks, Veronica. We appreciate your time. Um, so folks, um, please uh, visit learning skills and you know, look at their workshops. I, I, I highly suggest it because I have taken time management as Veronica was uh, letting you know about because that's a really uh, challenge for many students. So now I'm going to pass it on to our friends Tammy and Brandon to go on and talk about uh, liberal arts and professional studies, specifically academic advising.
Hello. Hey, sorry guys. Uh, um, <laughs> I Brandon is going to do the slide, but uh, I just want to say good morning to everyone. My name is Tammy Astrofoli, and I'm one of the student success and academic advisors over in LAPS. And my colleague Brandon here is going to introduce himself and start off the slideshow for us. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Brandon Emanuel. I'm one of the student success and academic advisors in Central Advising. I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Now, to start off, we're just going to give you a brief introduction on what academic advising actually is at York University. Now, um, academic advising, our view, um, is to, to to help students understand university policies, regulations, and um, monitor your academic performance while you're a student at York. Um, also in advising, we hope to enhance your skills to be able to be a successful learner. Um, in collaboration with um, what we talked about in the previous presentation or the previous slides of time management and things of that nature, all of those things come into play um, when doing academic advising with us. Um, we also support students in um, realizing their academic goals and dreams and things of that nature. So um, what, whatever career path you're looking to do, um, whatever department you're, you're thinking about getting into, we can assist you in academic advising and, and, and doing and all of those things accomplished. Next slide. All right. So here in this slide, we're going to talk about the benefits of academic advising. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about what an advisor does in the faculty of LAPS. So we act um, as, we have three main functions as an advisor. So we act as a humanizing agent where the interaction with students, it occurs outside of the classroom and it's an informal setting. So the student has to feel comfortable and we ask that the students seek us out. So if you're looking for some advice, come to us. Um, we also act as counselors or mentors um, that help guide students through academic policy, as Brandon mentioned, and procedure. We offer advice, we listen, and sometimes we refer to support services wherever necessary. We also act as educators, right? So we teach students the strategies for success, and we help them understand the curriculum, the purpose for their academic program, and we encourage problem solving, critical thinking, as we've mentioned before, and decision making. So here in LAPS, um, the advisors here, we take an appreciative advising approach to academic advising, which is an intentional collaborative approach to help students optimize their educational experience and achieve their dreams and goals. So here in LAPS, to just to break it down, we help with academic future planning. We, we help to monitor your degree progression. So as you start until you graduate, we help students keep on track for their own academic success. We assist with the navigation of university policies, regulations, procedures, and services. We do know it's a large institution. Students can get overwhelmed. We're here to help you. We help students to build on their own successes, as Julia talked about. We, we help to make referrals for uh, various student, and, uh, student academic and social services um, throughout campus. And we, we, we are that connecting, that humanizing agent um, with university personnel, or other areas on the campus. This one's Brandon. Okay, so there's a number of ways that you're going to be receiving um, your courses and for, for for that matter, academic advising at York. Um, now, a few of these are online, remote, and blended learning. Now, what is what what are these things? What are what is online, remote, and blended learning? All right, great question, Brandon. Great question. Thank you for asking. So, when we say online learning here, we are referring to uh, asynchronous. So, these courses will be delivered fully online. There is no specified meeting times nor dates. When we say that the course is remote, so that's an REMT. So in the fall of 2021 and the winter of 2022, courses offered remotely as synchronous with scheduled meeting times will be indicated as REMT. So it'll be remote, you'll be doing it wherever you are, but there will be a, a specified date and time that the class will be meeting. With blended learning, it's also, it's also synchronous 
Um, it's similar to remote. So these courses will have some scheduled meeting time, but uh, they will also have some um, online components to it. And if your course has lecture on it, which is LECT, these courses will be meeting in person on campus. Now, this information is also available on the um, course uh, schedule. And um, I will be putting a link into the, into the chat for you where you can access this. It's in the FAQ part of um, the online schedule. Now, now, Tammy, how do I, just a question for you. How do I identify which courses are online from which are remote and which are blended when I'm choosing my classes? Great question, Brandon. Great question. Okay, so when you're choosing your courses, under the type of course, it'll say, if it's remote, it'll say R-E-M-T. If it's blended, it'll say B-L-E-N. If it's online, it's O-N-L-N. And if it's a lecture, L-E-C-T. So that's now, how we're gonna identify our gonna courses. Is this gonna be the case both for fall and winter courses? Okay. So when you are enrolling into your courses, you need to pay attention to what type of course you're enrolling into. So we do know for the fall term, um, we are having 50% of the courses back on campus. And while 50, the other 50% will still be available online um, and, you know, blended and so on. But when you are enrolling in your courses, we are strongly encouraging you to pay attention to um, the, the, the session, whether it's fall or winter and the type of course that you're actually enrolling into, right? So if you're not in the country at the moment, or if you're away from York and you have no arrangements to, to live closer to campus or so, just make sure you're, that you're not choosing a lecture course. Okay, thank you, Tammy. Thanks, Brandon. Okay, Brandon, I got some questions for you. Okay. So, how frequently should students be meeting with an advisor? Um. I think what we recommend is meeting with an advisor at least once a semester um, or, or, or once every academic session. Sorry, no, sorry, once a semester, but maybe three times each academic session. So we're thinking maybe at the beginning of first term, um, towards the end of the second term, and sometime in between. That would be ideal, we think. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, good. So now, Brandon, if I'm trying to, um, to, to get in touch with an advisor, how long does it take for an advisor to to, um, to reach out back to me, to respond to me? Okay, so that all depends on the time of year which you're trying to uh, get in contact with your advisor. Um, typically, um, during, a, during a normal time of year, I would say give us, give us anywhere between 24 and 48 hours max um, for the advisor to get back to you. During a, a little bit of a busier time of year, like during startup, but startup meaning beginning of the fall semester and beginning of the winter semester or term, um, maybe a little bit longer, maybe, maybe, maybe a day or so longer. Okay, good. And how should students be following up with advisors? Uh, you can follow up with us through email, preferably. Um, that's probably the best way to contact your advisor. Um, also, you can make an appointment with your academic with, with, with reception in 103 Central Square um, for your academic advisor. Now, this depends on what faculty that you're in. Um, I'm just speaking on behalf of liberal arts and professional studies advising. Um, you, you can always make an appointment with, with one of our receptionists there um, to be able to get in contact with the advisor. But usually email is probably your best bet. Awesome. Okay. And how much workload should students be taking? That, that is a very interesting question. So it, it really just depends on, you know, what you feel like you can handle. Um, and in terms of how much uh, responsibilities that you have outside of your studies at York. Now, we recommend that you do at least nine credits um, per term um, as, as maybe a full-time student to start minimum. Now, if you have, if you, especially if you're living on campus um, or if you're an international student, we recommend for you to do um, very minimum 
18 credits for the academic session, nine credits per term. Uh, we think that's probably best practice. Um, again, depending on your schedule, depending on your outside commitments, it could be anywhere from 18 credits total to maybe 30. Okay, good to know. Thanks, Brandon. So um, if I'm not an LACS student, where should I go? So what are the other faculties here at York? Now, some of the other faculties include health, science, um, you, know, you have Lasan, which is which is which is engineering. Um, now, Faculty of Education. Now, we suggest that it's probably best for you to contact your home faculty for any advising with regards to your major. Um, we, we 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 say this because we do not want to mislead any students that are from outside faculties. So it would be in your best interest to contact your home faculty for anything related to your department specifically. Thank you, Brandon. Okay, Jillian, are we gonna um, open it up now for questions? Yeah, so thanks, Tammy and Brandon, amazing. Um, so folks, if you do have questions right now, this is a, we'll give you like five minutes two minutes to um, ask them to Tammy and Brandon because they are the experts. They are the academic advisors for LAPS. So if you want to unmute yourself, feel free to do so. If not, um, you can also put it in the chat. I'll wait for a little bit. Okay, so seems like a little still a little shy so maybe we'll just leave it on for the question and answer portion um, at the end of the presentation so here is the contact information for um, liberal arts and professional studies so feel free to take a picture of that again this will also be available to you later on um, in, via the recording okay so just a, an important thing to note here, uh, Brandon is our um, RSY, dedicated RSY advisor, Ready, Set, You advisor from uh, Liberal Arts and Professional Studies. However, should Brandon not be available, Tammy has kindly offered um, uh, herself as well. So if you wanna contact her, please, especially if you're an undecided major student from LAPS because Tammy does oversee unde undeclared majors. Um, so, okay, before we move on, that's a lot of information. So <laughs> um, please type ready in the chat if you are still here. <laughs> uh, hopefully you are. <laughs> someone has a question in the chat. Okay. Um, um, I saw that somebody asked if the vaccine is mandatory. So Helena, as... Um, Brian uh, alluded to a while ago, yes, the, the, the university did shift on that um, mandate, which is uh, requiring vaccination for all students, staff, and faculty with exemptions uh, based on human rights and religious exceptions um, uh, applicable to all the laws and regulations um, that, that we're following. So uh, yes, the short answer to that is yes, with some exceptions um, that, that you will have to specify. There, so Casey also put um, the website for Better Together. Okay, um, everyone's, okay, y'all are ready, huh? Okay, so we'll move on to the final um, stretch of this presentation, which is um, the timeline. So I'll pass it on to my colleague, Shanae, to cover this for us. Basically, this is what you'll have to wor worry about in terms of Ready, Set, You from the first pre-orientation session to your first mentoring sessions come September. So uh, listen actively um, and, you know, have fun. <laughs> okay, hi everyone. So I'll be covering the timeline from this orientation, including the next two and onto our first mentoring session with you. So firstly, the goal of this presentation, this orientation session is to introduce you to York University and to the Ready, Set, You program so that you become familiarized with the process of transition from high school into post-secondary studies. 
to learn about the RSY program and to get introduced to two of our most important partners at York, which are LAPS and LSS. So after this, you'll be enrolled into the Ready, Set, UE class platform. And everyone in the session will be uploaded onto there, and there will also be more resources there for you to access. So after the session, you can begin to explore the E-class activities to gain insight into the activities that Ready, Set, you will facilitate for the rest of the academic year. And you can also explore the resources and divisional partners beyond the pre-orientation pre session. So our second session, the goal of that one will be for you to meet more of our partners in student success. And that will be this Friday from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And the goal of the session will be to acquaint you with some of Ready, Set, Use divisional partners, namely student accessibility services, student life and engagement, and student financial services. And then our third session's theme is strategies for student success. And that will be next Tuesday, again, from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And as part of that session, Learning Skill Services will be providing you with a full workshop. And you will also be taught how to better navigate the class. And also, you'll be told your next steps for transitioning into Fraser. Finally, York will be having orientation on Friday, September 3rd, 2021, which is highly recommended for you to attend because we're mainly introducing you to our program and generally about um, York U and our partners, but the York University orientation will be better suited to introduce you to the university overall and also give you another opportunity to meet students and ask the questions you have. So as part of transitioning you into the Ready, Set, You program, we will need your fall timetables in order to be able to schedule you, schedule you with our mentors. So the deadline for you to submit your fall timetables is Thursday, September 9th, and you will be submitting these timetables on eClass through a Dropbox. And this will be good practice for you to learn how to submit assignments through eClass, which you will probably be doing for all of, all of your courses in fall and probably winter too. So we're just asking you as soon as you finalized your timetables, pick your courses, draw, submit your fall timetable in that Dropbox so that we can assign you to a mentor as soon as possible. So just remember that when you're navigating eClass, you should choose to future because you might not be enrolled in it as present technically yet so it might not show up on the home page so choose future and from september 8th onward the ready set ue class platform will then move from future to in process and we'll go more in depth on teaching you how to navigate e-class in our third orientation session next tuesday And then our weekly mentoring sessions will begin after you've submitted your timetables on Monday, September 13th. So this is just an overview, just the timeline. So as I mentioned, today is our first pre-orientation session. And then we will have this session two, this Friday, session three, next Tuesday, York University orientation on September 3rd. And then we're asking you to submit your timetables to our RSYE class by September 9th. Also important to note is that the fees will be due for any of your fall or year courses by September 10th. We'll probably cover more with financial services in a later orientation session. But classes will begin, fall and one year classes will begin on September 8th. And your mentoring session will begin the next Monday, which is Monday, September 13th. So now we'll move into a QA and a session. If you, have, if you have any questions about anything I said, anything anyone previously said, or just in general, no stupid questions. We've all been there in first year. <laughs> anything that you're concerned about, just we'll be happy to answer you. 
Okay, um, thank you for asking how are we going to receive this presentation? So this presentation recording will be uploaded onto eClass. So when you log into eClass and go to Future and select Ready, Set, You, this presentation recording will be there for you to access whenever you want. Again. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so while we're waiting for questions to emerge, so please think about some stuff that you want to ask. I'm going to pass it on to my colleague, uh, Casey, to talk about some of our communication channels um, and introduce some fun incentives uh, activities along the way. So let me just pull that slide up. Okay. Um, um, while Julian is putting the slide up, I'll ask Shanae this question that um, we have from Nawal in the chat. Sure. So Shanae Nawal asks, if we have an online class, but an in-person class directly after, when can we be on campus in the time being? I'm, I believe you're still allowed to be on campus, even if you don't have a class at that exact time. So like, I'm not sure how it will be actually in fall at the moment. They're still trying to figure some things out. But York has several libraries, including Scott Library, where you would be able to have a space to attend your class if you needed to, or elsewhere on campus. There are some libraries where you don't have to be quiet, but you would be able to be on campus. You don't, you don't have to be on campus only directly when you have a class. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Shanae. Um, and with that, I'll just go to the Ready, Set, You communication channels, um, which is, I'm very excited. Um, but first of all, let me join my colleagues in congratulating you in um, coming this far. We're really excited to have you. Um, and you would receive, um, majority of our communication um, channels uh, be comprised of three um, elements, which is our Instagram channel, um, Instagram. So please follow us at Ready, Set, You on Instagram. Um, and our main email is readysetu or rdysetu at yorku.ca. And then, of course, as mentioned before, our e-class is readysetu. Uh, and please ensure that you just um, uh, play around with the e-class functions because you may find our module be in the future courses section. With that, I think we can move on. And, oh, here's me. I'm actually wearing the same sweater, so I can model for you. Um, um, so with our um, communication channels, we would like to give an incentive, kind of we love giving uh, prizes away. So you get a gift card, you get a gift card. So we're gonna have some fun. Um, so, so the first 15 students to follow our IG and DM us with their full name and what you've learned from session one, will get a $10 Starbucks gift card. So please um, hurry and follow us. You can see our app on the top left corner there. Um, and that's where we would put um, our, any kind of announcements, anything that we'd like you to know. And it's all, always um, good to keep up with news. If you don't have Instagram, however, no problem. You can just send us an email at readysetu.yorku.ca and just tell us what you learned from session one, which LSS workshop you plan on attending this first September. Um, and then the email subjects would be RSY session one contest. And then that way we will also be part of the list of the first 15. So hurry up, don't miss out. Um, there is a Starbucks on campus. So you can actually take a, go to Starbucks on campus and you know, maybe have your coffee while you're on a tour. However, I am not sure how campus look like right now, um, <laughs> but we can discover that together. Back to you, Julian. Okay, thank you, Casey. So yeah, um, let's have some fun with that. Um, so I'm not sure if there are more questions that students would like to ask. Uh, please feel free to unmute yourselves. Or put it in the chat if you feel more comfortable that way. Mm -hmm. Y'all are um, shy. And don't forget, huh? our academic advisors are still on board with us. So mm -hmm. you feel free to ask any academic related questions as well, and they will be happy to answer it for you. A lot of info thrown at you folks, but don't worry. We'll, we'll be here every step of the way. I know it's kind of overwhelming, but everything will be provided to you on eClass. So you know what, if you feel like you've missed something or you know, want to know one of the program elements, you will get all the information on eClass on our website.
Okay. So um, just feel free to, oh, what were some workshops that you did that you enjoyed? So um, personally for me, I did it in my second year. Thanks, Samantha, by the way, for the question. Um, I did time management. So uh, that one was really helpful because I, prior to taking that workshop, what I ended up doing with myself, oh, I'm procrastinating a lot. I'm, I'm, so, I'm such an A, B, C, D. I, I, I'm such a bad student type of thing. So I, I beat myself up uh, time and time and again, and I still do sometimes. But after attending that workshop, you know, it kind of shifts and you kind of learn that, you know, it's not really, it's not just you're a bad student because a lot like the competence thing, you know, you learn that to be competent at something, even time management, you need some time, energy, and effort to, to, to invest in. So um, learning skill services will really elaborate on how you can best manage your energy so that you're able to put more effort and invest the time that you need to organize your time more effectively. So that one was really enjoyable for me. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. And um, then one of the other questions that we got on the chat, um, it's from RuPaul. And uh, they're asking, um, are, we allowed, are we required to put our cameras on during class or is it based on the professor's opinion? Uh, that will be depending on your professor's um, uh, arrangements. So some professors, this is something that you're also going to learn. Uh, another myth is that you know, professors like don't care about their students type of thing. That's really unfair for professors, first of all. So professors vary. So some professors are really you know, strict. Some professors are really flexible and it depends on who you, who you get. So um, depending on their arrangements, RuPaul, uh, they may require you to put your camera on and some, some may just say, you know, feel free if you don't want to. Uh, and then, you know, so it varies. Uh, Jaren, to answer your question about signing up for September 3rd orientation, I have put the link for York's orientation information on the, in the chat. There are many different orientations being offered depending on colleges and uh, different faculties, right? And for every kind of orientation, there's a different step. So I would recommend you just go ahead and to the website and check it out. If you have any other questions, let us know. Uh, Jaren, I would suggest that you sign up um, because sh just showing up, I get, it, the, the, the orientation is happening virtually this time around. So I would, I would assume that um, to, for you to go into the Zoom meetings and whatnot, you'll have to register. So um, it's a process. I know. I understand. Um, but once you've signed up, especially in Start, you'll have access to all of the step-by-step -step processes for you, uh, for students going into the university for the first time. Thanks for your questions, folks. Um, okay. So yeah, feel free to keep them coming. Um, while you're doing that, I'll pass it on to Stephen for some closing remarks. Let me just share the slide. Thank you, Julian. Ah, yes, indeed, a lot of information, but exciting times for, for those joining us. Um, and yeah, keep on bringing on the questions. Also, uh, do email us uh, if you do have to jump out because obviously we're getting closer to our time. Uh, do email, we'll put the email uh, in the chat so that you have access to that as well. Uh, send your questions there as well. Um, we will be communicating with you uh, throughout. But I just wanted to just say a big thank you uh, to you um, for attending and participating in our first pre-orientation. Um, I hope you know you enjoyed today's interactive session and also just you know have have had your questions answered. Um, I'm looking forward to um, you know getting a, a strong start uh, to to your academic journey here at York, and you've you've had a better understanding of what you know, Ready, Set, You has to offer, are the components of Ready, Set, You, uh, some of the advising, um, you know, having that connection with your advisor, uh, hearing about the learning skills services uh, and some of the workshops uh, that uh, will help you in your journey. Uh, and, you know, just looking forward to that start in, in September. 
Uh, but I also want to just extend my, my gratitude to our entire team, uh, the mentors who've done a, an incredible job putting this orientation together uh, and successfully executing it. Um, uh, it. You know, without them, uh, most of this wouldn't have been possible. So we just want to extend that thank you. And thank you to our, our partners as well, uh, Veronica and Tammy and Brandon, um, you know, for uh, agreeing to to share, you know, showcase your resources and, and support student success. Um, we want to encourage you to register for the August 20th and 24th, as we've mentioned, those two uh, sessions that are pending uh, this Friday and next uh, next Tuesday. Uh, do keep in mind that um, by registering and attending and participating in the program, uh, you know, part of the admission uh, conditions is that you will maintain uh, your offer at York, uh, and also just have access to a variety of specialized resources to help ensure your success. So please, as you have, uh, you know, enjoyed today's session, uh, we, we hope to bring that, uh, that energy and that, uh, that support uh, in session two and three, uh, where you will gain uh, additional information and have the opportunity to ask questions as well. Um, to better situate and better prepare you for uh, the start of, of, of the academic journey. Uh, and if, again, as I mentioned, if you have any further questions after today, um, you know, don't hesitate to reach us at the ready set you at your Q.ca. Um, you know, follow us on our, on our social media platforms, um, you know, and let's have that early conversation. Let's let's begin to build that report so we can start to uh, prepare you and support you the best way we can. Um, other than that, uh, you know, we'll wait some few minutes. I think folks will, uh, if folks have questions, uh, and then we'll just uh, wrap up for the end of the day. We look forward to seeing you back, um, you know, on, on Friday uh, for our second, second session. And again, as I mentioned, uh, please take a look at the COVID-19, you know, uh, the Better You, Better Together by You website for additional information. These informations are changing and evolving. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that you're up to date uh, with what's happening from the university. So do take a look at the website and familiarize yourself with the key information there. And of course, if you have questions as well, uh, feel free to ask us. But we're really looking forward to seeing you back on Friday. Uh, look out for that, uh, for that information to register again uh, in, in the coming days. Uh, and send us an email if you have questions. All right, over to you, Julian. Thanks, Stephen. Um, so I think I should stop recording for now, just so if students feel more comfortable asking your questions then. Um, and let's see.